Uh, Josh Appel is with us. How do you uh, how do you perceive the Terry Rozier for Kyle Lowry trade? And again, it's a first round draft pick as well. We haven't talked about it too much, but my thought on it kind of is, you know. You get rid of this expiring contract, but you also get rid of a player who I think fans were annoyed with. I I think he was annoyed with the team. He knew that this was his final season anyway. So I I think like it was kind of fraying a little bit. So you're able to pick up a pretty potent scorer, which adds some firepower. You get rid of this big expiring contract, though, and now you're taking on a new contract that you're going to have for the next couple of years. This season and then the next two seasons beyond that. Now, again, Correct. we kind of talked about this yesterday. I, I I don't get too involved with, oh, now you're burdened with this contract for the next couple of years because that, that's Andy Ellisberg's problem. Right. That's Pat Riley's problem. And they always seem to be able to navigate that. If there's a move they want to do, despite what's happened recently, it happened with Jimmy out Butler. It. Remember yeah. with Jimmy Butler, they had nothing. They had no assets, no space. All of a sudden they have Jimmy Butler. But how do you perceive just adding Terry Rozier to this lineup, and and what does that mean for the Heat this season? Well, one of the biggest complaints about Lowry was what he wasn't giving you offensively, and just comparing their offensive games, Rozier definitely gives you more on that aspect. I'd imagine there's comparable defensively, so if you're looking at it from that perspective, it gives you a lot more on the offensive end, which at times they struggle with. Solana, you watch this team every day. Like, are you, are you buying into it all? Like the the idea that Bam and Hero and and Jimmy, when they're together on the court, the, the results haven't been great. Like, how do you think they have he matches with? No, I'm he, he hey. brought it up yesterday. I mean, they're, they're 31 and 32 overall going back to last season when they all suit up and they all play. Uh, this year, much smaller sample size, 12 games. I think they only finished of those 12 games, 10 of them together because uh, Tyler went out in Memphis, Jimmy went out in Utah, and they're five and seven overall. And to me, it's why I got bothered by the Kyle Lowry hate this week specifically because everybody's like, oh, he's got to get out of the starting lineup. And Spo does that, and you still lose two games in a row. And then you look at their most recent loss to Orlando the other day. Jimmy Butler, you got blown out, right? You scored a season-low 87 points. I think it was a season-low in field goal percentage in that game as well. Jimmy Butler takes 10 shots in that game. Five of those 10 were three-point looks. Bam Adebayo only had six free throw attempts. He's taking more shots outside of the paint now than he has been in a very long time, and he's not hitting those shots efficiently anymore, which he was earlier in the season. And Tyler Hero took, I think it was 13 shots, and only three of them were not three-pointers. So his mid-range game, which is where he lives and where he excels, he's no longer getting those types of looks. At least he didn't the other day in Orlando. And prior to that game, Spo's talking about, well, we have to get better. We have to get those guys to their strength zones. Jimmy, half of his shots, he only took two free throws. And a game he got blown out in, like all three of those guys are not doing what they need to do to find the best opportunity. So that's the that's what's lacking right now for Miami. Yes, you need guys like Jaime Hawkins Jr., who's been out, to give you points off the bench. Duncan, Kevin Love, the Heat were the number one three-point shooting teams in terms of percentage up until January, and now they're one of the worst offenses, in part because of injury, yes, and in part because they're not hitting three-pointers anymore. And I think Terry Rozier helps them in that category. There's no doubt about it. He's another guy who can create his own shot. I don't know if he's going to start. We'll have to find out. But he can play guard. He can play point guard. He's a scoring guard. He's a hooper. So this is a plus for the Miami Heat. I'm just not certain if this is the cure-all to their offense, because as I just told you, Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, and Tyler Hero are not playing the best complementary basketball between each other. That is the biggest problem with the Heat offense. I was seeing tweets from Anthony Chang earlier today. Um, Terry Rozier is averaging a career high in points and assists this season. He's also shooting a career best 45.9% from the field. Anthony Chang uh, from the Miami Herald also tweets out by trading Kyle Lowry's expiring salary for Terry Rogier's multi-year contract. The heat will have some maneuvering to do to get under, get under the second apron next off season. 
but we'll get there when we get there. And so I think what, and I know it was your concern yesterday when you were thinking of, well, you have an expiring contract. Why would they take on more years? You're finally going to be, you know, free from that burden. But I, I do think you have to just look at this in the, the short term. Does Terry Rozier make the Heat better yeah. this season? He does. Yeah. Does does he, you know, vault them past Milwaukee and Boston and Philadelphia even? You're like, probably not. But he does give you a better chance to win a game that you need to, to win because he can give you some scoring. Yeah. So you can't worry about taking on the contract, which is what Anthony Chang is saying. They're like, we'll get there when we get there. Um, I would just say this. The Heat are better today than they were yesterday. For sure. Now, is their situation next season better today than it was yesterday? Probably not, because he had a lot more free money next season. But don't worry about it. Only look at this season. They're better today than they were yesterday. Well, well Hawk, you brought up the point. This front office has proven they can maneuver really in any situation. Andy Ellisberg is viewed as one of the best, if not the best, at yep. managing the cap in the sport. I said if you raise Udonis' 40 to the rafters, his suit coat should go up to the rafters <laughs> yeah. when he's done. 100%. And uh, so I think in this spot, they this front office has earned the trust to maneuver when they're up against the cap and up against luxury tax like this. Um, and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I also read it gives them a little more trade flexibility this season too. It created a trade exception for them as well. Creates a trade exception. Uh, they're much less underneath the, the second tax apron, of course, which is a priority we all know right. for ownership. Um, and yeah, I mean, they're saving a bunch of money right now by doing it. The big question is Caleb Martin. He's he's a, a, a free agent at the end of this season. He has a player option. He's not going to accept the player option because why would he make seven million when he can obviously cash right. in for a lot more? That becomes a question. Right. Are you going to well. have the money to pay him? Right. Um, so, I mean, there, there are more questions. But, Hawk, I'm 100 percent with you. I was under the impression that to land Terry Rozier, you were going to give up more. It right? would have to be maybe two first round picks, which I, I would like if that was and, the case and a young player or right. a Caleb Martin. Right. Well, that's why they didn't trade for DeJounte Murray, right? Because Correct. They Ashton wanted more. a lot more. So and, when you put and it, it like makes that, sense for Atlanta, yeah. right? Like Atlanta still feels like they can make a playoff run. Why would they trade them to not only a conference rival, right. but a division rival? It didn't make sense right. for them. They were obviously going to try to fleece the heat. I don't think Miami ever had a serious path to landing DeJounte Murray, but with the Hornets, like, they're in a total rebuild mode anyways. They haven't even won 10. I think they won their 10th win uh, yesterday. So, hey, we'll get back a first-round pick. We hope the Heat suck by then because Jimmy Butler will be past his prime. Mm. And we get $30 million off the books, which we might even be able to parlay uh, into another young asset if they can agree to a buyout with Lowry or trade him somewhere else. So it works out, I think, on both teams, especially because what Solana points out. The Heat didn't have to give up the assets right. that you thought that they might have to. One other thing from Anthony Chang in the Herald, uh, for those who don't know, Rogier's on a $23.2 million salary this year. Then he's due to make $24.9 million next season, $24.9 million of his $26.6 million salary for the season after that is guaranteed. So essentially, he has two guaranteed seasons at about $25 million each after this one. Yeah, it's partly guaranteed, not next year, but the following. But if the Heat make the second round of the playoffs this year, it becomes fully guaranteed, adding two more million to that deal. Hawk, again, this year, much better team. I I, I think everybody would agree. Smart move. I, I, I was reading in The Athletic. They gave the Heat a B. Um, Stephen A. Smith loved it. Loved it. I love Stephen A. Smith. But thank you. You're welcome. If Terry Rozier is not the guy that you're seeing this season where he's shooting 35.8% from three and he's averaging 24 points per game, six assists per game with a really bad Hornets team, which was missing their point guard for most of the season. And he was actually posting a three to one assist to turnover ratio in LaMelo Ball's absence, which is very good. But he's not going to handle a lot of point guard responsibilities with Miami because Tyler Hero, Jimmy Butler, Jaime Jaquez, and Bam are your point guards. Um, and he goes back to being the career 36.7% shooter from the outside. Um, you love that. But if he's not, and he's just 34%, 33%, and you're paying him $24 but here's, million a here's year, the thing. I don't you're going to be frustrated. I don't think $24 million is an immovable contract anymore. You get 
you get saddled with a forty million dollar contract, it's a whole different ball game. So I I I think it's pretty risk free on the Heat's part. I also would have understood if they didn't do anything. I I I, I understood. I would I would have understood if they said, you know what, Terry Rozier, is he going to do enough for us? We'd rather just be free of the Kyle Lowry contract when the season is over and be able to like. Just I would have I, I would have understood that as well. But I don't not understand this move. But it seemed like the Lowry situation was becoming a bit untenable it was. for all parties. It was. So it like was letting it so drag obvious out. that he knew this was the end. There, there, there was there was something going on there. There was not great blood. He definitely thought he was getting traded in the off season in in the Lillard deal. I and mean, we saw him in the in, in the, the suite suite with Cha- Chauncey Billups yeah. at the Colorado game earlier in the college football season. So I, I just think it it played out a lot differently than both sides thought and it was just it was time and the heat got better and i've said this earlier uh, today too and i own this comment terry rogier is better than damian lillard mm-hmm. all right let me talk about the cheetah here we're at uh, hollywood kia and uh, we'll be here till six o'clock i'm glad you've staked your claim as owning that yeah that's mine yeah so you know <laughs> I think, I think just make sure it. you attribute it to me or solana you know if you if you let uh tommy tig know that say uh tomorrow <laughs> night for the preheat um just let him know that that's my take so Odyssey had reached out to us. Hey, we saw there was a big trade in Miami. Any good content that oh, you think we could push out? Please let us attribute know. that quote to me. I will absolutely. <laughs> Actually, please don't. Put a blog post up. <laughs> please do not. Please. <laughs> I withdraw the comment immediately. <laughs> I, I didn't know it was going to go in print. I withdraw the comment. I mean, in fact, you can have it, Josh. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't want it. Now when I think about it, you can have it. I don't it. want it. 